one call to action is that I see a gap because when we talk about gender uh, or violence against women and girls and harmful cultural practices, women are taken as a, a homogeneous group, but they are not. Women are different. We have women with disabilities, but above all, we have widows. Widows, not much is being said about harmful cultural practices that affect widows. And indeed, window, we, widows, immediately the husband dies. A woman is regarded as a second class uh, citizen or a, a, an inferior human being. Property in some communities is taken away. Uh, there is also, in some communities, there is also, a woman is, a widow is exposed to those harm, harmful cultural rituals, practices, which are very dehumanizing and which deny them of their rights, even right to ownership. Some widows are, are, are made to sleep with a dead body or, or to... Uh, to drink water that has the dirty water that has washed the dead body of the husband simply to prove that they are not the ones behind the death of the husband so i challenge religious leaders traditional leaders to look into the plight of widows to create awareness about the plight of widows and because widows are also neglected by policy makers I call upon governments, I call upon UN and AU to initiate policies governing widows' experiences can be implemented and where they do not exist, then they, they should be put in place. I will strengthen collaborations and especially bringing men on board. I will carry out uh, an advocacy training for male champions for gender justice. One of the things that ca has come out is the knowledge gap on, on gender issues and also inclusion on, of, of men. Addressing issues of harmful cultural practices, issues of violence against women and girls, and issues of SRHRR require a multisectoral approach. Nobody can do it alone. No single organization can do it alone. And so I really appreciate and congratulate AUC and UN Women for bringing faith-based organizations and also communities of uh, traditional leaders together.